now we're going to go back to Soapbox and use Soapbox to connect to the whistle on the XML gateway itself. This points it to the virtualized service, which is exposed now from the XML gateway. We type in the whistle address. Soapbox connects to the gateway. It's the list of services. Again, we choose Get Price, and it creates a web service request that we collect now to the XML gateway. We see the request is very similar, but it instead now it goes to the gateway when we press Send Request, and the response comes back from the gateway. We see the gateway also, if you point a browser at the WSDL for it, it will return back WSDL of the stock code service. You can see the address of the XML gateway, and now I'm rep replacing the address of the service itself within the WSDL. See the client now connects to the gateway and pulls down the WSDL so it understands how to connect to the web service. Now we're going to go back to Policy Studio and we're going to modify the policy which is in place for the stock code service at the gateway. What we're going to do is add XML thread checking to it. Policies are modified by dragging and dropping filters from the right hand side and joining them up with existing policies. The red line here means that if the message is not a whistle request, then we're going to call the XML thread policy. If it passes that policy, then we're going to check is it the correct format, the correct schema, by following the green line. So red lines are what we call failure path, green lines are success paths. We're also going to add a further policy shortcut, which says that if the message fails the XML thread policy, if there is a threat within the message, in other words, then we're going to return an access denied message to the client. Once again, once we've changed the policy, we're going to now use the F5 key to simply refresh the policies on the XML gateway. Now we're going to use Soapbox to create the client message containing harmful content. First we're going to send through a valid message and we see the valid response come back we see the return value come back in the right hand side. The malicious message we're going to create is a SQL injection attempt. It's a small snippet of SQL that we're going to put into the message. An attacker would do this to try and get it executed against the database. We see we get the access denied re response come back according to the policy which we have set up. We send a few messages through and we see each time it gets access denied. The real-time monitoring shows that the messages are being blocked. Real-time monitoring is flash-based within a browser and shows what the XML gateway is blocking at any given time. In our policy now, we're going to add an alert so that when a message is blocked for harmful content, that an alert then is created so that an administrator or security professional can see exactly why a message has been blocked. We're creating a Windows event log alert in this case, but our other options included email, SNMP, and syslog, and others. We drag in an alert filter, and we're going to create an alert message. The alert message can contain wildcards. Here we say the message contains threatening content, and then we use a wildcard with a dollar sign to include the threatening content body. We're going to send that to the Windows event log. So what we're going to do is, after the XML thread policy has triggered that a threat is present, it's going to move down to the alert and then send the alert. Once again, we refresh the server so the policies are then pushed to the XML gateway. We're now going to go over to Soapbox and send through a request again, which again includes the SQL injection attempt. We see our access denied response come back from the XML gateway but now what it's done is also triggered an alert, which we can see in the Windows event log. The alert that's sent to the Windows event log includes the threatening content in the message that you can see there, the SQL injection attempt. This allows people to view the message which was blocked, and they can also paste it into Soapbox, resend it, change it, if they want to do some round-trip examination of the message. Moving back to the Policy Studio, let's look again at the policy which we created. The green paths are success paths, the red paths are failure paths. We see also we have a blacklist within Policy Studio, and we can see the SQLR attack which was tripped there. 
Moving back to our overall schematic, we can see what we've set up here is service virtualization. The client is connecting to the gateway. Previously, the client was connecting just directly to the web service, but now the gateway is in place and it's virtualizing the service and also checking for threatening content. The increasingly open trading environment built on the internet presents companies with many opportunities and challenges. Rapid response is key to generating operational efficiencies, avoiding customer churn, and providing a positive end user experience. The ability to control and monitor access to online services and enforce service level agreements is mission critical. In this open web based world, companies need to have confidence and trust in the security framework underpinning every commercial exchange. And Vordell addresses all these concerns. Our products accelerate, manage, and protect services across corporate networks and cloud computing environments to enable.